Hey everybody, so having kept track of the AI related news over the last like year, two years or so, it can be seen as like a hype cycle in my opinion, where it'll be different phases. Some phases it will be AI is kind of worthless and then in other phases AI is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And it seems that we're entering that cycle again at the moment where AI is the greatest thing since sliced bread. We see that uh, Claude and Anthropic, the makers of Claude, just received billions of dollars in funding and so everyone is all aboard AI and everyone wants to jump all aboard the AI revolution again. And so we're, we're at the hype train going climbing back up. And so I watched this cycle and if you know anything about these cycles, this is the cycle that has existed since before I was born. I wasn't born in the 1950s and the 1960s when AI was first invented, but I've read a lot of history around it and a lot of books from that era and a lot of time, uh, spent a lot of time researching. And, and you can see the hype cycle from that period of time was exactly as it is today. And when you break down the fundamental equation, the fundamental equation is exactly the same as it is today, as it was then, and, and we're almost in the exact same place now as we were then. So uh, the biggest thing that I challenge people with this hype cycle is uh, if you believe that uh, we're at the precipice of something great with AI, or you think that like we're, we're very far off, uh, I challenge you to examine why you think that. What, like, what is your rational and logical basis for either one of those assumptions? Um, because the answer is e e either one of those. Either we're we're very far off track and and we were never on the right track, or we're like right there. Um, and I, I don't know which one it is, but um, that's the purpose of this video isn't to answer this that question. It's it's to just explore this question in general and to pose it. So I think the first place that we start when posing this overall question is what is thought? Like that's, so uh, are we on the precipice of creating AI that are thinking machines and that are actually capable of thought? First question is, is what is thought? <laughs> like uh, I can't tell you until we can answer that. So I mean, according to like Google, uh, thoughts are electrochemical reactions that occur in the brain. The brain is made up of 100 billion nerve cells that transmit impulses through synapses. The neurons release chemicals called neurotransmitters, which generate electrical signals in neighboring neurons. These electrical signals propagate like a wave to thousands of neurons, which leads to the thought formation. Thoughts are not solid, liquid, gas, or plasma. They're their own unique state of matter. Thoughts are quantities, mostly bearing acquired properties. Conceptually, quantities and properties of the mind are built or constructed by cells and molecules of the brain. Our experiential history consists of the things that we've learned, consciously and unconsciously, and the various events that have shaped our bodies and our neural connections. Cool. So, that's how thought works in the brain. So then I, I, I guess that the next question would be, what is a neuron? And then, so if we look at what a neuron is made of, and then we look at the images of the neuron, we get, it's, you know, pretty straightforward. So we've got, uh, this is a good one. Uh, we've got what's called a dendrite and an axon and a cell body called a soma. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And then so um, there's three parts of uh, what this cell is, right? Um, again, dendrite, axon, and soma. So then uh, what is like um, within a neural network, like what's a neuron in a neural network? Um, and then so there's two answers to that, or a few answers to that. And so if we're looking at the 1950s and the 1960s equation, the answer to that equation is uh, is a perceptron, and and what we're looking at here, and then so here's like a good example of a perceptron, and we can see that there's three parts to a perceptron, and that's kind of interesting, right? There's three parts to a perceptron, and then so if we go back to our neuron, there's three essential parts to a neuron. We've got the dendrite, the axon, and the soma. One, two, three, and then when we go to perceptron, hmm, 
inputs, one, two, three, and then we have these three inputs, and then they produce an output. Uh, so again, like what we can see is very clearly this is just very, like a very straightforward simplification of what this is. So if you think that the answer is is that two thought is somewhere in here that this is the physical process for thought that you you need like a dendrite a dendrite an axon and a soma uh, and some sort of combination of those uh, and that you can have a simplified version of those or a more complex version of those but either way if it's simple or complex it's those reactions together and these processes together that kind of generate thought and then you throw a bunch of these all and you'll get thought either you believe that or you don't it's like a pretty black or white yes or no question and then so if you believe that like yeah this seems like the process for thought then 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 we're pretty much right here if you don't then then like we're not and then so the question that you might be asking yourself is okay so like this is perceptrons right which were invented in the 50s and then so now we're at transformers um and then so like what is significantly different between transformers and perceptrons then um, and then maybe you might look there for answers and and so uh, my answer to your question there is uh, there's not a, a ton of difference like uh, the the difference between what a perceptron is and a transformer is is they're like the same family the same category they do essentially the same thing um, a perceptron is a simplified version of a transformer. A perceptron has a transformer has things that a perceptron doesn't have. That, that, that's like the best definition. Um, so uh, within a transformer, I think the, the one that we're looking at here is the the best example. Uh, and then you can see that there's kind of like two forms of transformers, and the most common one is multi-head attention transformers, where essentially you have the transformer that can uh, pay attention to uh, words before and after essentially is is kind of what that multi-head does um, and but you can see it's that same base process where you've got like these three inputs uh, so like K Q K V in this instance or V K Q in this instance um, and those three inputs then go through like different processes, same thing as they would within a neuron, and then they all produce a singular output, or, or uh, they go out to a singular output layer. So it's like, even as you're increasing the complexity of the transformer compared to the perceptron, it is still that exact same three input process which is the exact same as a neuron. <laughs> like it's, it's nothing changes with this equation. Nothing has changed with this equation since AI was invented and nothing has changed with this equation in humans since humans were invented. So uh, the bottom line here is that where we're at within this is like not, we, nothing has fundamentally changed since the 60s. This is essentially the same as this, X, Y, Z, in this instance is essentially the same as QKV. Uh, and then the end result is exactly what we're looking at here. Um, and then these are, this is a, like an example, a very simplified example of a neural network where you've got those input layers with the three inputs that then go out to hidden layers and then they do different things and then they produce an output. And any advancement over since the 1950s that's occurred, um, in AI, it still uses this as a foundation. Like we're, the only things that we advance are like um, we can now pass data from the output layer back to the input layer, so we can create a loop, and and that loop is now major advancements. We can uh, increase the number of hidden layers. We can increase the complexity inside of the hidden layers uh, of these each individual nodes. We can, uh, and and you see in this diagram every single node is attached to each other in this hidden layer. We can experiment with only attaching some of them and like creating different regions and different things with the architecture there. But this general architecture stays the same. Like we're not going to uh, turn this into a wheel. It's, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, and this is the um, general architecture and we're just making improvements. And then so again, like it, it so this is the exact same equation that was faced when AI was first created in the 1950s and the 1960s. And people faced this exact same equation. And then when they faced this equation before, they said, eh, 
it's good, but we don't think it's it's quite good enough. Like we we don't think that this is actually what thought is. Like that's the the conscious conclusion that people came to with that, and then AI winter happened, and then it all went to the shelf and to mothballs. And then and now we, we're here, like, you know, 30, 40 years later after that point. Um, and then we're facing uh, that exact same, those exact same questions again. Like, the same questions. Um, the questions haven't changed. The architecture, the fundamental architecture hasn't changed. It's not going to. So if you didn't think that this was the answer then, you, you shouldn't think that this is the answer now. Uh, if you thought that this could be the answer then, then there's possibility that this could be the answer now, but which way you go on that, it, it like, uh, again, I'm not trying to answer that particular question. I'm just trying to ground uh, people within this. Like, it's it, it's not um, anything more complex or more hidden than this. It's it's the, the same exact equation that has existed since the 1950s. Do you think that simplification of neurons will get us towards thought. If yes, here we are. If no, then AI winner 2 is coming for you. Um, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.